Hello and welcome. This is part of a series. We're looking at uh, the Capture the Flag 2018 from Google. Again, uh, this is brought to my attention by uh, uh, guys I subscribe to, uh, Live Overflow and um, this guy, John uh, Hammond. And John Hammond actually did a very good video on this particular one. We're looking at the first admin UI uh, project um, or challenge, I should say. And um, he admitted that, you know, first of all, I watched his video before I started this, so, but he, he said, you know, he got help, uh, and he explained how it works, but he didn't really have the thought process of how you would get there, so I kind of, you know, walked backwards through this, and um, I'm going to show you a little bit more in depth on uh, how you might come about figuring out the things, and in fact, uh, going through this in my mind, I uh, actually found uh, the, the flag a little different than uh, than he did. Uh, it's kind of in a different way. Anyway, again, uh, all I, I, part of my project here is to write a script, and I, that was also inspired by uh, John uh, Hammond here, um, to write a script that automates each one of these. So if you go to my uh, GitLab, gitlab.com forward slash melx1000 forward slash capital CTF and get all the scripts, let's go ahead and I'm in the folder from that project admin UI and I'm just going to run the script that's in here and what it's going to do is it's going to log into the server pull out some information uh, it's going to spit out some stuff here it's going to bring me into an hex editor because that's the next logical step for me uh, so you actually have hex edit installed uh, for this next part to work um, and we'll talk about this a little bit more actually didn't I actually use this and I found the flag but it really wasn't because of this. I'll talk about that in a moment. X out of that uh, with control C and it will um, give me the flag which was found in the user's home. So how do we figure all that out? So let's go back to the page here and it's telling us again to use netcat to log into this. So the scenario here is basically there's an IoT device uh, that you uh, think you found a backdoor to. You log in and let's go ahead and just do that. I'm going to use NC netcat uh, to get in here. Uh, it's on port uh, 1337. You have a few options in here. Uh, we can do one for access code where it's asking for a password, which I actually haven't tried typing in, but I believe that's probably the flag we're trying to find. Um, if you give the wrong one, blah, 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 it's going to tell you, you know, that it's incorrect and the authorities have been informed. And it's going to disconnect you. So we're going to reconnect. Uh, obviously, three is quit. So the next option that we have that does anything is two, which is to look at the end user license agreement and patch notes. Uh, and really, it's just patch notes. Um, and in here, you know, if you were to type something, it's it's going to give you an error here saying no such file directory, which is a sign that it's trying to read a file, and the file name you gave does not exist. Um, so let's go. Uh, I accidentally hit one there. Let's log back in. We'll go two, and if we do version three, we're going to hit enter here, and it's going to give us the patch notes. You know, so it's going to tell us that's rollback of version two because of random reasons. So basically, they didn't update, but went back to an update of version two. The rest is kind of blah blah blah. It's fixing. You know, it's it's just made up stuff. Um, but that that's a hint. Rolling back to version two. So if we go in here and we list read read through version two. Version 2 here actually says that uh, there was a bug that they fixed uh, that fixed uh, transversal bug through paths, meaning that there was a bug that allowed you to get through uh, to different directories from where you're at, uh, which is exactly what we're trying to do. Uh, so again, if we're trying to read, uh, we can try different things. So like we can try reading files that we know exist. So I can try just, you know, you know, first thing I would try is try running a command, which isn't going to work. Uh, so just list. Uh, I can try just saying, you know, uh, forward slash, which is our root directory, which, you know, can be considered a file, uh, but it tells us that uh, it actually doesn't give us an error there, which is a little different than if you were to type ls or something that doesn't exist. So now we know that it is seeing that as a file, but it's not printing it out. Okay, uh, so let's go back into that menu. And let's try typing in a folder name, so etc. Okay, now it's telling us that that file doesn't exist. Okay, so maybe it didn't see the root directory. Um, and uh, there, are, there are some files that are pretty much on uh, most standard um, systems. 
Uh, but uh, just to, to cut to the chase, you're not going to be able to give it a, a full path. What we want to do is transverse uh, up through the directories. But we don't know how many directories we're in. So um, basically, if you start, oh, let's go to two. If you start dot dot means up a level backslash dot dot up a level backslash. I'm going to tell you now, you can try to figure out by, you know, maybe trying to print out a file that you know, like fstab or the password uh, file from etc. Uh, until you can figure out how many directories down you are so that you can transverse up that many. But really, um, if you go too many, that's fine. So really, uh, I think that we're three directories. Actually, yeah, we're three directories in, because uh, or actually two directories in. We're in the home uh, folder of a user, so we're in their home and their folder. And that's what we're trying to find out, the name of the folder we're in uh, and the program that is actually running this menu program. Uh, but if you just give it a bunch of... Uh, dot dot backslashes dot dot backslashes you can't give it too many uh, and I just timed out there so let's go ahead and reconnect um, so real quick I'm going to actually open up oops, open up uh, so I'm on my local machine here and this uh, flag thing it actually taught me a lot uh, this particular project things that I kind of knew, but didn't know a lot about. And one of the things that I really have always said that I need to know more about is the proc folder. So on a Linux system, and I guess most Unix and Unix-like systems, uh, there is a folder in your root directory called proc. And proc is basically generated when the computer starts up, and it keeps track of everything, and everything is a file. So you can find out what processes are running. Um, you can actually interact with things like LEDs and stuff on your computer. But you can find out a lot, uh, memory usage, PIDs of pro applications, what files are accessing what. Um, so real quick here, I want to give you an example. I'm going to move just into my uh, temp folder. I'm just going to make something called, uh, I'll just call it um, flag. Uh, OK, just a little working directory for me. So top screen up here, you know, we're ignoring that for now. Down here, we're on my local machine. And if I was to cat, out forward slash proc. Uh, actually, let's let's list out proc. I'm going to get very in depth here. Okay, so I'll make it full screen here. You have all this. You have all these these different folders uh, that associate themselves with different processes and whatnot. Uh, but you'll notice that there is a folder in here, uh, and it's actually uh, you know so the color here. Let's go ahead and do forward slash proc forward slash self. When we do that you can see that it is pointing to one of these directories. Uh, let me go ahead and open up another shell here and run that same command. You notice it's pointing to a different directory. I go back up here, run that again. It's a different directory. And actually, I didn't need to split the window to show you that because uh, it's not the shell that I'm in. Uh, basically, self is pointing to the directory here, which I believe is the PID, the process ID, of the um, current process that you're running. So every time I run list, I'm starting a new process. And that self is going to direct it to that process. So if we're inside an application and we cat this out, uh, the files inside this self folder, because we don't know which one of these you know, on that system, which one of these folders is going to be that menu application. That's what we want to find. But if we're inside that application, that application is uh, able to cat stuff out, it's going to show us, if we use self, the information for that application. Um, so I'm going to try to clarify that a little bit more. I'm going to make a quick shell script here. Let's call it go.sh, you know, bash script. And I will cat um, forward slash proc forward slash self and then within there there is a file called command line okay and actually if I run this it's not going to give me uh, the information about my shell script because this is a script a script is basically you know a plain text file that's executing a command it's just a serious command it's a script a script of what to do okay so we're going to run that and what it's going to do is actually it's going to tell me cat. And it's not going to put a new line character. So if I do that, it's a little confusing uh, the way this is uh, set up here. Um, but basically, it's telling me my command is cat. Uh, that, that's one of the places you can look. 
Uh, there's actually another option in here if we go back here, self forward slash uh, maps, I believe it is. And I'm not listing it, I want to cat it out. It's actually telling me that, you know, what program I'm running and what files it's linked to. It's dynamically linking to these these lib files. Uh, so I know w the name of our command and what we're running. So I can actually look in either of those files from within our menu because we know that we can cat out files from within the menu. Uh, so again, uh, the script that I ran is running commands. Now if I make a C program, so let me do that real quick. I'm going to uh, vim main.c and I have some vim shortcuts here so I'm just going to type cgcc and put in a little uh, template here um, to read a file and right here if I just take this uh, and um, oh this is my did I pick the wrong one or did I uh, mess up my template here let me see real quick Okay, I did fix that real quick. My my templates were backwards. My read and write templates should be right now. Uh, C is not my best programming language. One of the reasons I have some templates for this. Uh, but I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type GCC and put in my template for reading a file. Okay, and by default I'm just going to have it read this file that we're in right now. Uh, let me clear out these empty lines down here. So I come out. I can say GCC the main file here and output, I'll just call it main. Now if I run main, it's going to output that C code file. Let's go back in there, vim, and we will say forward slash proc, forward slash self, forward slash uh, command line. Now if I recompile it and run main, it's going to output that proc file, which the self is now going to link to this program. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to run that and it basically it just outputs the name of the program we're running. I hope that makes sense. So like if I was to uh, rename it uh, move main to blah 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 and we were to run blah 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 now it's going to tell me the name of the file is blah blah blah. Okay? Uh, and that's what we need to know for our project here. So let's uh, go back into this, go to, now if I go dot dot backslash dot dot backslash dot dot backslash um, dot dot backslash, just a number of times to make sure we go back far enough, then we go proc forward slash self forward slash command line, it's going to tell me the program that we're currently running in, uh, which is saying dot main, uh, which actually doesn't help us too much. Uh, so I think what I ended up doing, I should really be looking at my script here. Uh, I'm going to do, again, dot dot backslash dot dot backslash dot dot backslash dot dot backslash uh, proc forward slash self forward slash maps. And right here you can see, yes, that was a better option because the other one's showing the command as it's run. This one's showing the full directory. So now we know what the root user, or not the root user, but the user we're logged in at as is, which is user, and what binary we're running. Now the next step I did uh, in this whole process was, and if we uh, quit out of this, if we looked at my script again, uh, so we log in and I did the whole uh, proc self maps thing, and then I grep through that to get the root directory the name of the file that we're in, which is home user uh, main. Uh, and then here, what I ended up doing is I actually dump the entire binary and look for strings uh, flag uh, CTF. So let me go ahead and just copy that and run that one command. So what we're doing here is I'm actually echoing in the number two so the number two is saying select, you know, it's like typing two, which is read the U, uh, the uh, the license agreements and patch notes, and then backslash n with this dash e over here is saying enter, uh, and then we are running this command right here. Uh, so basically, we're going to be catting out the main file there, uh, and then we're piping that into uh, netcat, waiting three seconds, 
And then we're going to run the strings command, which the strings command, if you pipe in uh, binary information, it's going to strip anything that's not an ASCII character away from that. So basically leaving us with plain text. And I'm going to then grep uh, for both the keywords flag and CTF. The dash I says don't matter what the case is. Let's go ahead and run that. Boom. And you can see that we get a number of things out here. Um, this here looks interesting, uh, but I'm pretty sure I went there and didn't see anything there. Um, and there's the flag. So the next step I took, again, I'm just walking you through the process of this, of my mindset. Uh, hex edit. Uh, I, I dumped that whole file into a file called temp. So here we're here. I hit tab to come over here uh, into our column to the far right. I'm going to hit forward slash flag. Uh, and I saw this thing that said patch notes forward slash uh, flag. And now it looks like there's a dot there, but that's not a dot. These are empty space. So there's, look, if I move my cursor, my cursor's over that dot now. If I hit tab, it moves me back and forth. So I'm over here now, hit tab, I'm over here. Notice my tab, I'm at the same character. It says zero, zero. There's a lot of zero, zeros. Those are null characters, not a dot, not a period. If I was to hit period here and then go back over here, you can see it no longer says zero, zero. It says two E. So don't be confused. That's not a dot. So the first thing I did was I checked the root directory for dot flag and the root directory for flag. And then I checked the home directory for dot flag and the home directory for flag. And I did end up finding it in the home directory uh, under flag, uh, which I thought that I got from this here, but really I think that was just luck and really just uh, uh, common sense on an easy project like this to, you know, check for that file in, in those locations. So again, just walking you through my mindset here, if we were to uh, netcat back into here, let's go ahead and just boo, 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 remove this, remove all this stuff. So again, I'll go two, and I'll go, um, you know, just a number of these. Doesn't matter as long as it's more, uh, you know, than I need. Um, and then I said home forward slash uh, user forward slash flag it cats out that file, and here is our flag. Um, so that was my process getting through it. Obviously, the steps are a lot easier just doing it, but uh, I hope that I, that my explaining of my thought process on how I went through all this uh, gives you a little more idea on, on things you can do. And I hope, I mean, I learned a lot on the proc folder. Um, I was unaware of that self folder. I've played around with proc before and going into processes and stuff. I did not realize there was that, that symbolic link uh, of self that associates itself with whatever program you're running. Uh, so with that, now I think that uh, John uh, Hammond did something he, when he found it, I think he just did dot, uh, dot dot slash flag. Yeah, and that works too, uh, which confuses me a little bit, because that's moving up one directory, but I should be in the directory, well I guess uh, that... You know, let me let me see something real quick here. Oh, but I, I really don't know what folder I'm in. I can't really search um, the files here. I'm assuming that when the program starts, it's going into a subdirectory where these uh, licenses are, and that's why you're dot dot slashing up to get into the flag. Because if the main uh, the main program, this menu program, didn't change directories when it started, you should be able to do flag and run it. But since you had to do dot dot forward slash flag, uh, the program must go into a subdirectory, I would assume, which is probably where the text files for these version notes are. Um, so I'm not really sure how he got dot dot forward slash flag, uh, and I'm not sure if he's sure how he got that. Um, but that's why I had to go through this with myself, with my mind, and figure out how do I figure out uh, all this stuff and the whole proc. Uh, maps was uh, something very useful, uh, but again, knowing that you have to use that self folder under proc for the current fold, per, current commander running, uh, something new, and that's probably going to come in very handy doing playing around with programs like this in the future. I, I'm surprised I'd never come across that before. Anyway, again, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description. There you can search through all my videos. Uh, let me go there real quick. 
Um, you can also go to support if you want to support me. Also, check out the links in the description of this video, patreon.com forward slash metalx1000 if you want to become a patron of mine. If you also, uh, you'd rather, there's a PayPal link here. You can do one-time or reoccurring payments. I appreciate the support. If you can't support financially, think about supporting me with likes, shares, comments, subscribing, that stuff. You know, I hope helps. They say it helps. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully I'll figure out a few more of these Capture the Flags and uh, get you a few more of these videos out. I do thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.